present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. Naturally, we are here because you hear. Here, here. Us. Here, here. Here, here. Where's Michelele? Oh. Oh. Let me shake the cobwebs loose. As you can hear, it is raining here in northeastern New Jersey. It is a very damp penetrating cold and it's raining and it, we will get lots of rain mm. for the uh, the very strange unseasonably warm autumn of 2014 climate change okay but anyway formalities welcome everyone to uncensored hard-hitting truth I am your host James P Madonna of Mega Life 21 as seen on the web and I'm here with the one and only, my illustrious co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, and the current managing editor of Newsletter Censored, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Does illustrious mean like I emanate a light or something? That's, isn't that more illuminating? I don't know, but illustrious, illu illustrious you know, I mean... Doesn't it have something to do with light or something somewhere along the line? I don't know. I was watching uh, the documentary last night on YouTube of the illustrious legend of pro wrestling, gorgeous George Wagner, and I uh, and his valet, uh, and uh, Dupree, something Dupree. The Duprees? No, no, she was a. Uh, oh, a female. She, he met her in Vegas. She was a Vegas. I thought uh, he was showgirl or something. Gay. No. No, he wasn't gay. That was wasn't just a gay. gimmick. It turned out that George Wagner, Gorgeous George, uh, on on one of his job, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, he also acted a little bit too. Uh, he befriended Bob Hope, and Bob Hope took a liking to him and introduced him and gave him some of his robes to to start his first uh, robes and outfits, and and then he decided after. 14 years or, or whatever, over 10 years of pro wrestling, decided to take on this uh, gimmick that has never really been done before. You know, the, the pretty boy, nature boy type of gimmick. And uh, with, the, with the robes and everything, and the rest is history, you know. And he had the gold bobby pins that he called Georgie pins. He used to throw it to the females in the audience. And then he, his valet would come out and disinfect the ring. It, it looked like a big... Uh, well, that was ex needed. Exterminate. Well, you, you know where that, how that started. George uh, um, came down with some kind of a, what would you call a staph infection? Ah. He came down with an infection because they weren't sanitizing the mats. That's what I was getting And uh, he filled it with th this uh, sanitizer you know, a med uh, medically recommended sanitizer. They had it back then? And, well, they had something. And, and that's how the spraying started, by him getting this uh, infection from the mat. And, and it, it could and does happen. I mean, CM Punk yeah, well, yeah. got a staph infection from... from uh, Some of the bacteria germs can live for a while, you know, on you stuff know. like that, I guess. I think it, back then it was, was a fascinating uh, uh, documentary. Then I watched some old pro wrestling interviews from the 1950s with uh, a very young Nick Bockwinkle and Freddie Blassie and uh, uh, Iron Mike Sharp. It was, it was great watching all this. Anyway, go ahead. I must have picked up on wrestling a little later than that because the only guy I recognized there was Blassie. Well, I started watching wrestling when I was in eighth grade. And uh, uh, I remember Anthony the Rocka, These are my guys. Yeah, a, cla a classmate, the Rams. a classmate of mine, first told me about pro wrestling. Uh, a man by the name of Jose Luna, and he told me about this pro wrestling where people are yelling at each other, and and, and there's bad guys and good guys, and 
and they're they're they're, ha Lucha they're having Libre. interviews, and it sounded so fascinating uh -huh. to me that once I watched it for the first time on, on the ultra high frequency station. Oh, that was forty-seven, I think. Yeah, or in forty-one, you had you yeah. had this. Back then, we had antennas on our TVs, uh -huh. and there was this round one metallic in the circle ring rather and that was an ultra high frequency antenna and you had to keep on moving it and adjusting it what a pain in the ass it is to have rabbit ear antennas and, and this ring so if you were lucky enough and sometimes you had to move the TV so if you were lucky enough to tune in uh, I, I would watch it and I watched it once and I got hooked uh -huh. and at that time uh, the World Wide Wrestling Federation was uh, operated by Vince McMahon Sr. and uh, it was the um, it was the early 70s and it was uh, Pedro Morales was the uh, current champion okay uh, and uh, Vince McMahon a young Vince McMahon would have that yellow blazer yeah, on blazer. the sport jacket and he would interview people right in front of the ring and that's how that's how I first started watching. You know, of course, you had Captain Lou Albano, the Grand Wizard of Wrestling, Ernie Roth. You know, he's dead now. Uh, so on and so on. And you know, uh, there were other managers. Anyway, we can go on and on. I don't want to turn this into a pro wrestling talk show because we can go on and on and on with nostalgia. You know, the AWA and Vern Gagne, Wild Red Berry and Killer Kowalski, and all. We can go on and on and on, but we won't. Anyway, uh, we are here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. Uh, it is the beginning of December 2014, and uh, despite the fact that Buffalo and other parts of the United States going west is buried in snow, they are snowbound, mm. to put it mildly, we, knock on wood, are not here in the Northeast. Black Thorn. So anyway, um, I want to say shame on you, Chisler's Hall of Shame, to the entire health food and nutritional supplement industry in America, in the United States. But why? Because after reading an extremely impressive article about a medicinal mushroom called uh, chaga, which grows on white birch trees in Asia, throughout Asia, and also the northern United States. Uh, mm. After reading this long, super impressive article, it got me really enthusiastic. I went to do a, 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 a search on Google Shopping to see how much this chaga was. Of course, anything that uh, appears in a, the big spotlight of popularity in retail any product that is in the spotlight, these companies price gouge the consumer in the United States. Right. And sure enough, the prices are high. It's like everything else. When flaxseed oil was called linseed oil, it was cheap as hell. You can we get a bottle. painted with it. Well, then there was food grade. Oil paint. Uh, I remember in, at Aylward's Health Food Store, they had Hanes flaxseed, uh, no, Haynes linseed oil, because yep. Carlton Fredericks on the radio used to call it linseed oil. One bottle was like four dollars and change. Then all of a sudden all of the uh, great medicinal and uh, um, uh, information came out. Uh, Johanna Budwig of uh, Germany, uh, her information, her studies on flaxseed, and then all of a sudden the price shot way up and everybody was gouging the consumer. S retail you're sleazy, you're underhanded, and it's only in America that you are that way, it seems. And now I am, I am subject to listening to every nauseating, sickening Christmas commercial and, and, and uh, flipping the channels, uh, trying to avoid all these cr nauseating, sickening Christmas movies mm. and the stupid songs that were originally written by big retail stores back in the day all designed to brainwash you and lay a big guilt trip on you for you to part with money that you might not have to make you part with your money 
and that is their objective through this brainwashing. Oh, Christmas! Oh, what about Santa Claus? Oh, but they have the kids going. Oh, what about that blonde, the blonde idiot on Fox News? Oh yeah, that uh, was a little upset because the Eric Garner thing might interfere with the lighting of the Christmas tree in Rockefeller Center. I, I am very glad you brought that up because that shows you where where the conservative priorities are. Of course. The life of an, uh, uh, of an innocent man, Eric Gardner, who we are in spirit here at Newsletter Censored protest. Uh, we are joining the protest on behalf of Eric Gardner. This blonde bitch this, I'm going to blame Fox News. I don't think it's just her per se, but they are trivializing the death of Eric Gardner. I can't breathe. That's what he said on video. I can't breathe. Okay. Whether he had asthma or not, he says, I can't breathe. Okay. And, and I'm glad to see nationwide protesting on behalf of Eric Gardner. God, God rest his soul. Uh, um, and... Um, a horrible um, uh, trial. I mean, a uh, uh, grand jury. Grand jury decision. Terrible. Well, you got to understand something. And the grand juries will never indict the police. Okay. What about because the evidence stacks up against the police? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Lionel was up there with a video the other day and explained this very clearly. Lionel, yes. The grand jury is there for criminal indictments. The police are rarely ever convicted of criminal things. But, now, but lately if, they have been guilty of no, no, they will, criminal The, the Garners will be able to sue New York and Pantaleo civilly and they will win. Civil suit. Yeah. They will win. Just like the family, but not in criminal. Just like the family of uh, Brown, what, what, the one that holds Michael uh, Brown, huh? Michael Brown? No, no, the uh, uh, O.J. Simpson case. Uh, the, the girl that got murdered. Brown the, family. Yeah, yeah, they 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 slapped the civil suit on. Yeah, yeah. Because and, let's face it. Now, here's here's an example of uh, how far the police go today. Eric Garner supposedly was selling loose cigarettes. Is that a capital offense? Is that an offense that we kill people over? No. No, but if you fraudulently sell mortgages, you're you get a bonus. You're well. That's the that's you're the, a hero in a capitalist system. Oh, you're you're succeeded. But if you're selling cigarettes, big deal. He was unarmed. That's correct. He was selling cigarettes that he wasn't supposed to do, but he was. It was frivolous, that, like prostitution. That's, that's correct. Like marijuana and prostitution, trivial, frivolous, not, not a real crime. Not a capital offense. And he was not armed, and he said, "I can't breathe." Well, well right. if you can't breathe, you subdue him, handcuff him, but you don't choke him out, man. You don't choke him out, and that's well, what they did. Why didn't they just talk to him? The offense was minor. That's my point. You don't go no. crazy over, you know, restraining a guy for a minor offense. You talk to him. You talk to him and you say, you know, what you're doing, selling these cigarettes, is illegal. Correct. I just, I just want you to understand this. Uh, 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 like the police shows what on TV. Him, uh, uh, Sir, I would like you to, fall. do you fully understand what I'm telling you? And he yeah, would say and yes issue him of summons. Don't choke him What's out. What's the problem? To death. Issue of a summons. Poor guy is an asthmat was an asthmatic, and of course Fox News trivialized it, putting more importance on uh, what is it—the lighting Christmas of the Christmas tree, tree at Rockefeller Center, <laughs> and 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 the blood-sucking, sleazy, scumbag retail industry. Uh huh. You know. Yeah. They totally trivialized yeah. the death of Eric Gardner and. Uh, Shame on you, Fox. Shame on you, Fox News, for being that heartless and mean-spirited and are very unfair for doing that. Um, very sad.
I mean, you know, the damage is already done. Whether whether you win a civil suit or not, whether whether you throw the cop in prison or not, no, that ain't gonna happen. The damage it ain't gonna happen. The damage is already civil done. Civil suit, yeah. You can't bring back the loved ones. Cannot bring back the life of these young men. And I'm not just talking about Eric Gardner. I'm talking about all of them. Now there's another new case of an unarmed young black man yeah. being shot by the police and killed. Yeah, the, coming up. The, 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 the policeman's gun went off. Oops. Whilst they were in the stairway together. There seems to be a lot of trigger happy... A rookie cop. Rookie. There seems to be a lot of trigger happy cops nowadays. Well, I saw... I don't Itchy ask me the number, of, uh, the number of it, but these trigger happy cops have sure killed a lot of dogs lately. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the videos don't lie. The yeah. one cop was calling over to Pooch. Come on, come on. And then blows him away. Pop him in the head, yeah. Shooting a, a, go, a, war, a trespassing without a warrant on someone else's property. Killing their pet. Killing their dog. The dog was probably doing his job anyway. Yeah. yeah. That was one, uh, one I saw the other you know. day where they, 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 the dog is in a fenced in, a wooden fence. Uh, yeah backyard the cop opens the door the gate goes inside kills the dog the owner comes home he's upset he said why didn't you just back out the gate of course the dog is going to growl bark or, or, or show its teeth yeah they the, 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 the dog doesn't know you from a hole in the ground you know you're just a stranger intruding on his family's his owner's territory you know, and so, then you have other cases where the cops just decide to beat to beat homeless men to death, homeless people to death. Uh, oh, by the way, a uh, judge in Florida uh, finally. finally told the cops to stop arresting the 90-year-old man for feeding the homeless. Yeah. Finally. <sighs> Gee, if a, if, a, if a clergyman, if a minister can't feed the homeless, then who will? Well, certainly not these uh, Republican conservatives who call themselves Christians. They won't. Well, I posted a new front cover of the, uh, the, the Facebook group, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. It's one I had already. It's an image. Hold on. It's an image of the Capitol building with a gigantic red Satan hovering over it. And I have in red letters the real uh, source of conservatives' power. So, control, I'm sorry. The real source of conservatives' control. I, I want something that's really going to hit hard. You know, the nitty gritty. Going to hit hard and get under the skin of the right wing because if they ask me if I am implying this I will say definitely yes you, you people are evil everything you do is not of the Bible That's yeah. but anyway um, and if you claim it is there's your problem prove all things because an atheist you know would not ascribe to Satan being the influence there but a, these so-called Christians do so they are yeah. up for criticism. Right. Now, isn't there something also in the Bible that says that people should be judged by their actions, the fruits? They will be judged by their actions. By their actions. Talk is cheap. Anyone could say anything. Well, you know, conservatives believe that the poor should pay for their meals. Hey, Newt Gingrich wanted children that, that are from families getting food stamps to be uh, custodians in the school system and, and, and clean toilets and mop the floor. Well, he he wanted to put kids to work. That's one of the uh, 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 policies that uh, the unions finally won, wasn't it? To end child, child labor. labor. Yeah. Listen, those rotten unions. In, a, in this type of system of government, uh, right off the bat, I mean, complete good education, a complete good health care system, 
and a retirement with dignity should all be rights, not privileges. Well, yeah, that's one of the pro that, That's the problem yeah. I, I keep bringing up about the private sector. When you depend, we we have given the private sector the power over our survival. And once you deregulate the demons and uh, let them out of the Pandora's box and and let them run amok, which is what they public, challenge you as government. They want to they they want to take your rights away. They want to bring back slavery, they're fascists, they want to control you, they want you to be like like drones, lemmings, you know, and and do their bidding. Small government, you know, small government, we like And small just shop. Oh yeah. And just shop. That's what they want for you to mind. Just that, shop. That, that's the only thing they care about is that's whether the only freedom you need. The mainstream shops or not. This is an aquarium siphon. Forget about everything you were told about trickle down economics. It, it was never meant to work. It's all siphoned up to the top 20% economics. 20 top 20% would be the oligarch, and I guess a plutocracy would be the top 1%. It's all the same. No, well, if you go to Web Miriam I Webster's know, dictionary. But it's all the same. They got the money. It, it has to do okay. with the few. With, got the money. With all the money. There you go. Ruling and controlling the many. There you go. Don't get caught up in labels and definitions. And well, stuff like it's that, you, it, know? It, it, you know, education, science, education, you know, facts. You, you gotta, you gotta think like a scientist. You yeah, gotta, you gotta be exact. Here's the point. Yeah. When you're dealing with, let's say, a conservative Republican, and he's dealing with socialism and communism, he's not talking about the definitions in the uh, uh, dictionary. He's talking about totalitarianism. Yeah. So you got to meet him on his level. Which is a very because low, low it's a very simpleton level. Yeah. yeah, but he won't understand those other definitions that you're giving. No, but they're like all... Oh, you know, that's, that's how the they are. It's stupid. So you got to, you know, what he, what they mean is totalitarianism. And Stalin and Lenin and all of this crap. Right. In other words... That's what socialism and communism words, a become. A government that wants to take away their freedoms and, and everything that comes with freedom. Yeah. When in reality, what they hear is just lying propaganda to make Obama look bad because they're a bunch of racists. Meanwhile, Obama's track record has been outstanding if you look at the numbers. Yeah, for what he can do, yeah. If you look at the facts, the numbers of what Obama has done, fantastic compared to the mess he inherited. Now, yes. Jake was right when the Democrats had the Democrats had complete control of Washington the first two years that Obama took office. Right. The first two years. They didn't do shit. In my opinion, they sucked. They, they could have got a lot done. They could have got universal health care. They, they could have got at least one great thing they could have done was that. They didn't Instead do of it. Obamacare, which right? means um, Obamacare giving everything to the private health and you know right. companies and etc. Hey, Obamacare was a compromise with the, with the Republicans, but they don't look at it that way because the Republicans don't it was want Republican policy from the get go. They don't want any of the poor to get anything, for any free. help for free. Nothing. Nothing. What was the figure? Uh, for every billion dollars given to Two the billion poor, is given to well, uh, corporate welfare. Exactly. It sounds higher than... I have a feeling... It might, is higher. It's higher than that. For every one billion giving, given to social programs to the poor, two billion is given as handouts... To Exxon Mobil. To the big corporations as corporate yeah, welfare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want to call it, subsidies. It's Tax still, it's still corporate yeah. welfare. I think it's much higher than that. It is. Just like the unemployment numbers are really much really higher, much higher. Yes. in reality. Anyway, forget about trickle-down economics. It's all siphon up economics, the devil's economics. Ooh. All right? I just wanted to get my siphon thing over Ooh. with. Now let's sink our teeth. The devil. The devil's economics. The devil. Now let's sink our teeth into these readings. Uh, but first I want to say hello to my 
very near and dear friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Greetings, hello, Miho. And, uh, and of course, the one and only former WWE wrestling, pro wrestling star and supreme uh, uh, trainer extraordinaire, the president of KT Training, Train to Win, and Akara USA, Mr. Ken Thiessen. Mr. Ken Thiessen, from, uh, residing in Boca Raton, Florida. Boca Raton. Del Boca Vista. All right, let's sink our teeth into these readings. Flu season! Speaking up. Oh yeah, my doctor tried to give me a flu shot and I said, hell no! In New Jersey. Speak up, speak up, speak up, man, speak up. And the rest of the country. Speak up. But, the flu vaccine may not offer as much protection this year as it has in the past. That's toxins in it. Like mercury? The vaccine is not a complete match for the strains of influenza that are circulating in the community this year. So you think it's a cheaper watered down flu vaccine? It's the wrong strains. It is, it is worthless. Worthless! It is not for full, full, full spectrum protection. So, Comprehensive. <clears throat> it is possible that some of those who have been vaccinated may still get sick. The Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said in an advisory to health professionals. And authorities say that the more aggressive type of the flu, type A, is dominant. Wow. in New Jersey. Historically, type A has led to more hospitalizations and deaths, particularly among the elderly, the very young and those with chronic diseases. Though we cannot predict what will happen the rest of this flu season, it is possible we may have a season that's more severe than most. Officials urge people to get vaccinated. The vaccine does offer protection against some of the strains of flu in circulation. And it can reduce the severity of the illness among those who do get sick. Prove it. In New Jersey, flu activity this week is moderate. Up from low as of November 22. We've started to see an uptick, said Dr. Gary Monk, chief of the vir virology department at Hackensack University Hospital. It's a small number. We just started. The, the state sent an electronic health alert Thursday to hospital officials, local health departments, and other providers about the federal alert. I say take optimal amounts of certain supplements per day like vitamin C, now, not the little drop in a bucket that the RDA and the registered dietitians tell you about, but a 60 decent... milligrams. A decent, huh? 60 milligrams. Decent amount, <coughs> uh, starting at, I'd say, a thousand and up for basic maintenance. I'm more, wa uh, three at divided doses. Yeah, divided doses. Uh, take... But more is better. Take a natural vitamin A and vitamin D. Uh, and zinc. I take it from fish liver oil. I have uh, 10,000 units a day of the vitamin A, and uh, not the dry vitamin A, uh, not the palmitate. And and uh, I say I'm getting in about 800 units of the uh, natural fish oil vitamin D. Very crucial to the immune system. Um, 
and uh, zinc. Go easy on the zinc now. Don't go hog wild. Um, I'm t right now, as, as a basic hub of the wheel, I'm taking a <coughs> Nature's Way Alive uh, formula for it's alive. for men 50 and over. Uh, it, it has phytonutrients, uh, concentrates in it. It's got pretty in impressive uh, potencies. Very impressive multivitamin. Take it one a day. But uh, it has 50 tablets. Now, uh -huh. they, they couldn't give me an extra 10 tablets and make it an even two months worth. No. Oh no, they had to make it 50 days worth. It's like a can of coffee being like 13 ounces instead of 16 ounces. Like it used to be. Yeah, or, or, or um, a box of pasta being 13 ounces instead of a pound, like it always was. Yeah. It's like screwing the consumer. And keeping the... And then uh, during commercials, they, 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 they claim to care so much about their consumers. Come on, would... would... They don't. Would McDonald's, does McDonald's care about you by using pink slime? Come on. That's only for starters. Exactly. Their, their milkshakes contain over 50 chemicals. The oil, the, the fake crap toxic oil they use to fry your french fries in is, is, is poison. They're, obviously they don't care about their customers. Crest toothpaste, oh wait no, Colgate, excuse me, one of the, to the uh, Colgate's uh, one of the, the whitener ones, it has, uh, I think it's uh, jet fuel or something in it. Lovely. Come on, man. What about the uh, the bread? The bread from the, the Subway and the Blimp Eye and all of these things, they have something uh, uh, bad in the bread. Come on, bread is bread! Maybe the same... You ever notice, um, this is why I don't buy uh, nationally advertised bread, ever. Read the ingredients on something like uh, whole wheat bread, you know, a popular brand. Read it. You'll see all these chemicals and, and words that you can't pronounce. Yeah. Why does a natural loaf of whole grain bread, if it has whole grain in it at all, why does it have to have all these chemicals? It doesn't. I don't care if it's what That's the chemicals the do. They shouldn't be there. That's correct. Continue. A report summarizing a year-long investigation by the legislative panel examining the George Washington Bridge Lane closures found no evidence of Governor Christie's involvement. That's what they say. They but found, they found no evidence concluded that two of his allies acted with perceived impunity really when they gridlocked Fort Lee's streets apparently for political reasons after you finish this article I have some very interesting to say the committee's 136 page report drawing on sworn testimony private interviews and thousands of subpoenaed documents also highlights the unsuccessful efforts by a now shuttered arm of Christie's office to court the Fort Lee mayor's endorsement finding that the closures were motivated in part by political considerations. The report states there is no conclusive evidence as to whether the governor was or was not aware of the lane closures or involved in directing them. but it catalogs several unanswered questions surrounding the scandal and cites a lack of cooperation from several key players who invoked their Fifth Amendment right against 
self-incrimination. The governor's office released a statement Thursday in response to the report from the attorney it hired to conduct its own investigation. The committee has finally acknowledged what we reported nine months ago, that there is not a shred of evidence Governor Christie knew anything about the George Washington Bridge Lane realignment beforehand, or that any current member of his staff was involved in that decision. Thus, the committee's work has simply corrobor corroborated our comprehensive investigation. And with this inquiry behind it, the governor and his office can now focus on doing what they do best, serving the public interest. While the report does not contain any conclusive findings about Christie's involvement, it puts a spotlight once again on a scandal that the administration had tried to move beyond. And it comes as Christie considers whether to run for president, a decision he has said he will make early next year. Yeah, heaven help us all. It also comes as the United States Attorney's Office <clears throat> continues a criminal investigation into the lane closures. Like the report commissioned by Christie's office, it found that the principal actors in the scandal were former Port Authority executive David Wildstein and Christie's former Deputy Chief of Staff, Bridget Ann Kelly. But it also found that Port Authority Deputy Executive Director Bill Baroni and former Christie campaign manager Bill Stepien shared some responsibility because they were aware of the lane closures as they were happening and were aware of the public safety consequences. Bill Baroni? Bill Baroni. It's full of baloney. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say that my um, my co-host in, in the new show, um, well, the, the restarted show, uh, Holistic Health Talk, Mr. Mario Petrus, I salute you, greetings to Mario Petrus. Is, uh, is friends with the mayor of uh, Fort Lee, and he's going to have a talk with him. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, yeah, he, he knows him pretty well. Um, so uh, interesting. Uh, Bridgegate update. Well, I'm sure the truth is that that's who, you know that's what they did. They they politically tried to uh, ostracize that mayor and stuff. Well, well, but the point is that. The, the people who did it and involved and know the answers kept their mouth shut. So how does an investigation get anywhere if these people keep their mouths Nobody shut? Nobody wants to testify. Hey, look, it, uh, for Chris Christie, for Chris Christie to expect a, a Democratic politician to endorse him, which is, which is, uh, you know nervy as all hell to well, assume that that means that uh, it must be a pattern in New Jersey for Democratic politicians to be endorsing Chris Christie if he expected the mayor of Fort Lee to endorse him he expected bipartisan support from everybody in New Jersey because Why? he's the perfect governor in his mind well, of course, in his mind. And, and in the mind of his party. But uh, to expect and some the of the traitors to Barbara Bono. I was getting to that. Thank you. Barbara Bono, uh, who, in my opinion, demolished Chris Christie in the two debates she had with him, 
lost by a landslide because many Democrats in New Jersey stabbed her in the back and uh, went with Christie. Mm -hmm. You know, traitors to the Democratic Party, which means that they are not progressive or liberal, that they are corrupt and corporatist. Yeah. And they screwed over Barbara Bono, who by rights should have won because after the first four years of Chris Christie, everybody did nothing but complain about Chris Christie, and there is no logical reason why he should should be reelected. But he got reelected, and many Democrats just turned their backs on Barbara Bono, and uh, I'm surprised Barbara Bono has been quiet about it because if it was me, I would be singing like a canary, complaining, yelling. Uh, granting interviews left and right. Yeah, well, what happens with uh, political parties and stuff like that? Why do they? Why are they if so you kissy complain, ass? Why do they kissy because ass? Because if you complain, you're not going to go further. Why not? Don't because the people? They will, they will ostracize. Don't, they won't give you the job. Well, who the hell needs it? Well, then you become an independent like Bernie Sanders. You still won't get the jobs. Look, what if the, the people thing, know the real truth? Then the people the will be on your side. But the people don't give you the jobs. Wall Street gives you the jobs. Well, they want another job besides being a politician? You, you see what happened with Eric Cantor. This happens all the time. So they're, they're thinking about lining That's their correct. pockets and not about being public servants and, that and stuff went out, I don't know how long ago. And, and, and dedicating service. themselves to the voters and the people, the mainstream. If they were public servants, they wouldn't accept the salary. They're not public servants. They're not servants of anything except the corporations and the rich. Well, if they're guaranteeing themselves a damn raise every year, I guess that doesn't make them public servants. Ain't that something? The Social Security recipients this year will get a 1.7 percent raise but Big shit. every year the Congress gets its three I think it's three percent it might be five percent they're already making 175 well, grand they're gonna make more not counting perks for doing nothing but obstructing for doing no work because it's automatic they put it in the law that they get theirs automatically Isn't it similar to the um, the uh, the the uh, uh, imperialist system, the uh, what do you call the, the the royal family in England, you know, the, which are the biggest welfare cheats, you know, and now and now the U.S. media is making such a big stink because the what is it, the Duchess of something? The, you mean Kate Middleton? Is that uh, she'll be here tomorrow? What is she, the Duchess of something or other? Uh, Bug tussle or? Yeah, she's a duchess or something. She's but he, part of the royal family, which I have no interest in. Of course, she's married to William. Oh, my God. The, the U.S. media locally here in New York, it, all they've been talking about is this visit by by the duchess and, and, and well, her a uh, very attractive woman. significant other. I mean, She is a uh, another Diana, Princess Diana. But they're so infatuated with the royal family, who are the biggest blood-sucking welfare cheats. Hey. They're holding on to David's throne, aren't they? You know, isn't it funny that um, the modern-day descendant of David's throne, which is in London, England, when I say David, I mean like King David that killed Goliath. Uh, yeah. talking, we're talking about Bible prophecy. Yeah. It's in London, but you know that the head, the, the Rothschilds are also based in London? Isn't it funny how David's throne because. is in London and the Rothschilds who control... Not funny at all. <laughs> Not funny at all because that England, uh, you know, yeah. England used to be the uh, the uh, money capital of the world. Right. Like the Rothschilds is is a bank, right? Until after World War Two, the Rothschild Bank supposedly oversees even the Bilderbergs. Bilderbergers? No, 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 no. You're confusing things now. No, I, I read an article that they oversee the Bilderbergs. They're, they're like the, the big kahunas of the NWOs. Well, whoever has the money are the big kahunas. Okay? Okay. No matter where it occurs, whether they're Bilderbergs, Illuminati, or whatever, Rothschilds, 
uh, uh, Rockefellers, whatever. Whatever you got the money. But 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 it's just London, the seat the seat of David's throne. Rothschilds are in London. Uh, Mr. Anonymous, the real story about him was in London, I believe. He, he was he was an Englishman. So. It all falls into place with prophecy. It all is, you know, ironing. And so it's all um, uh, manifesting itself into reality. I mean, look at all. Look at all the. Um, if people understand that. Look at all these spellbound, bewitched Americans that have reelected the do nothing corrupt Republicans in Congress. They because took over the Senate. The Democrats are baby killers. Uh, listen, Secular uh, humanists. listen, you zealot, religious nuts. There is no evidence, and, and the Bible does not say that a fertilized egg or a, a, a embryo that breathes like a fish is a human being. There is no nothing in the Bible that says that. They seem to think that. At conception, you know, once the egg the is life fertilized, force. that it's a human force. life. The life force at conception, that's correct. Unless you're, at conception. unless you're a baby that's already born. Then they don't want you. They don't want you, no. That's correct. They're hypocrites. They never followed through on their thoughts and whatevers. To the to the end product. That's why these idiots they pick on, and choose. on the Facebook group, they they accuse us of being liars, us progressives of being liars. But that's all they they do is you guys lie, you guys lie. Hey. I says no, it's proven that you guys lie, as not us. Where is your evidence? They Newt, never come up with any. Newt Gingrich explained it some time ago. Politics is just your idea against my idea and whoever gets the most votes wins the idea war that's how they look at it and and, there and are, they get their ideas through when they are able to rule and they many Americans out in these uh, redneck states they decide to get all their news from a complete joke called Fox News and you know, I you mean, know. look, even MSNBC is corporatist to a certain extent. They are all corporatist. What are you talking about? Who, have who supports them? Who sponsors them? That's why, uh, is that why Rachel Maddow and Ed Schultz only go so far? Only so far. With their shows? That's correct. As opposed to Jesse Ventura and uh, Bernie Sanders. Off the Sand grid, yeah. And Bernie Sanders that go all the way with their opinions? Off the grid, yeah. Okay. And Ralph Nader. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people, uh, they don't like... Nader probably because the media made Nader because look bad. Because Nader is not beholden to anyone. That's why they don't like him. Yeah, they'll say like people would say, "Oh, I don't want, I don't want run, now Ralph Nader to win to run for anything. I, I'm not. I, I won't vote for Ralph Nader. That's why not? You can't handle the truth from Ralph Nader. No, they can't handle what he would do. Ralph Nader has put so many gotten into law. So many laws, more than anyone else ever had, has done. Ralph Nader. On behalf of the consumer. On behalf of the consumer. And even the American people. Correct. You know, so Ralph Nader is definitely, he wrote a book a recently, good guy. I heard, he's a oh, very good guy. Good. And they just, people just can't handle the truth. Hey, the U.S. media demonized him when uh, Barack Obama first got elected and he called Barack Obama and Uncle Tom, <laughs> meaning sucking up to the to the corporations. And that's what he turns out to be, right? Herman Cain. Bingo, might he called him. Might as well call him that too, and Uncle Tom. Nine, nine, nine. Herman Cain, I hear, is the one that put the law in for restaurant servers getting two dollars and change an hour. Oh, I don't know if he put it in, but he certainly supported it. He, well, look. They're all greedy they all love scumbags. Yeah, of Restaurant owners, you know, stealing tips from their people. Probably. You know, uh, 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 corporate CEOs. You, you know, uh, uh, they'll take a dollar any way they can get it. Yeah. Now, uh, but I wanted to get make something ahead. clear to you. 
when you were saying <laughs> before about the the, the, uh, the red states and then watching Fox News and everything, yeah. you got to understand something. Many of these red states, they don't have the choices of cable and etc. like the rest of the United States does. They don't have cable. They don't have cable. Yeah. They don't have cable. Don't let the cat out. Not the cat out of the bag, but <laughs> out of the cat house. Why on earth does the cat want to go out in the, in the cold? Oh, rain? come on! She goes out in this crap. She's got a nice warm house. She can come into and sleep and etc. But that she don't care. She don't care. Cats stay out there are in the cold. very strange creatures. Yeah, but I have, I have, uh, I had some cats that, uh, like I got one right now. She won't go out in the cold. That's because, <laughs> you know, the, well, the cats I had were were never feral, and they were very devoted and 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 responsive, and and they, you know, they just cared about following me around and playing, you know, and uh, that's what happens to the environment, you know. I mean, if they're born feral. You know, well, like, I'm talking about what, like in the heat. Yeah, like a human Better being. Than a, cold. A, a human being's personality is already set by the time they're five years old, like, from what I understand. Four, maybe. Something like that. They, they're, they're total. What makes them. Who they are. Who they are as an adult is already predetermined by the age of five or whatever. All right, continue what you were saying. About to talk about the red states. Do not, the red states oh, I said that do not have yeah. the option of cable TV. Yeah, they don't have the choices that we have. We have uh, 200 stations, and still there's nothing on. Well, on cable. If I'm gonna, um, I, I I usually watch on certain programs when when I uh, really don't have anything to do online. Uh, which keeps me busy because of the five groups on Facebook right, and the radio station. Um, I watch uh, the Travel Channel. There are certain document, uh, certain shows, educational shows that I like there. I like the History Channel. I like sci-fi. You know, I like educational programming. But I, uh, most of Hollywood, most of these shows that are coming out of Hollywood today are all a uh, 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 very gay, and um, they're also um, very Jewish. You know, they're always making uh, re reference to, to 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 Jews and uh, using uh, Yiddish words and stuff. And I I don't like an entertain an entertainment industry that's biased like that, and uh, it's sickening to me. You know, uh, um, you know every every show is like very gay or met or metrosexual so I, I don't want you NBC news medical reporter Nancy Snyderman yes apologized on the Today Show Wednesday for violating her quarantine for Ebola exposure saying she failed to appreciate how frightened Americans were of the disease. Of course, it's Ebola. It was Snyderman's first on-air appearance in a month and a half. She followed her talk with Matt Lauer by reporting a story on women and depression. Right. NBC had kept her off the air after an angry public reaction to her broken promise. Ooh. After saying she would stay in her New Jersey home until the window for symptoms of the disease had passed. Well, <coughs> I kind of like didn't go out too much either. <laughs> she was spotted in her car yeah. getting takeout food. I'm very sorry for not only scaring my community and country, but adding to the confusion of terms that came as fast and furious as the news about Ebola," said Snyderman, a surgeon who has worked for NBC News since 2006 after a long stint at ABC. 
Snyderman had been reporting on the Ebola outbreak in Liberia in October and worked briefly with cameraman Ashokoka Mukpo. What the fuck? Who came down with the deadly virus. Mukpo came back to the United States for treatment and has since recovered, and no one else from NBC was infected. Throw your guts up with that, people. You gotta drink like a gallon of electrolyte fluid per day. Snyderman said she and fellow crew members were taking their temperatures several times a day to check for possible signs of Ebola. But within 72 hours of agreeing to a 21 day quarantine, Snyderman left her home! prompting New Jersey authorities to then make her quarantine mandatory. I would have put her under house arrest, make sure that quarantine is really quarantine. This is a selfish person. And for takeout food yet. She wants to, um, misery, li misery likes company. She wants to spread the, the, uh, the love around. We knew the risks in our heads, Snyderman said. But our, but we didn't uh, really appreciate, and frankly, we're not sensitive to how absolutely frightened Americans were. She said, "Good people make mistakes." Not, not if it it, it jeopardizes uh, 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 the not a doctor. The mass, huh? Not a doctor. No. A doctor does not make such a mistake. Not, not these mistakes. Or a nurse. A trained nurse doesn't make these mistakes. Uh, you hear that? The nurse from Texas that took a plane flight? Yeah. Okay. And I stepped outside the boundaries of what I promised to do and what the public expected of me. And for that, I'm very sorry. Now, I should be punished. Punished. Now what, to the fullest what, extent of what, the law. What would we feel like? Would it make us feel a lot better if policeman officer Pantaleo yeah. comes out tomorrow and says, I'm very sorry for killing Eric Gardner? Oops. Doesn't yeah. bring back Eric Oops. Gardner's life. Doesn't bring him back to his family, does it? No. Oops. I'm very sorry. I f all of a sudden, I feel remorse. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. No doesn't cut it yeah. and um, you know or any healthcare professional should know better uh, I mean even I, I'm not a healthcare well I, I, I'm a nutritional consultant but I mean I'm not an expert on on microbes or anything but it's common sense yep. that if you have something this dangerous mm -hmm. you should be separated and, separated from the public and you promised to abide by your isolation. Ah, she made the statement and then skipped out. That's correct. Well, she needed that takeout, baby. I don't care what the hell she needed. That McDonald's. Stick and lying bitch. You know, she needed that, that McDonald's hamburger with the pink slime. Could have caused the pandemic in the state of New Jersey. Well, there you go. You know, and uh, all right, we're going to take a lunch break, and uh, now we will go to uh, our uh, voiceover artist, William H. Morrow III, with his words of wisdom and promo. And we'll, we'll be back for the second half of the show. Really big shoe. Pretty big shot today. Yeah. Elvis yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, gorgeous George Wagner died of sclerosis of the liver. Oh, boy. Because his... This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. 
the newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. His wife said that every time George went out, people wanted to buy him drinks. And George was not the type to say no. He felt bad. Well, there you go. And he became uh, hooked on the hooch. That's what happens. Well, right? I think they, uh, there's a, uh, uh, there was a show on before, and they were in Turkey. Yeah. And whatever, the, I didn't catch the uh, the Turkish drink. You know what it is? What? I don't know. What no, it is. they every every culture, every That's every country drink. has their own traditional uh, uh, alcoholic beverage. Right. Well, the point is that the fermented these uh, people drink a lot of it, and uh, and uh, cirrhosis of the liver. Is one of the big diseases. Wow! Well, it killed, killed the particular political guy, uh, head guy they were no. talking about. That's well, what he died. Well, of. you know, drinking in extreme moderation right. is fine. It's fine. You don't need hard liquor. You could do without hard liquor, but a little has some benefit. You know, it, it's nice. You, you know, know uh, especially I dark red wine and. But but you know, overdoing anything. You know how a French man holds his liquor? How? By the ears. Oh, 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 Come oh. on, what? That's his mind is not... Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. How does a, Fre a French man holds his liquor? Oh, By the ears. oh, oh, I get it now. <laughs> okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III our voiceover artist for your words of wisdom and your promo and uh, let us return now to these readings buddy boy as buddy you, boy as you could hear the uh, the tapping outside it's still raining listen to the rhythm of the falling rain hey what what did the uh, the uh, leader of uh, the Vulcans on the planet Vulcans say, what was her name, Depau? Depau. She says, Zaveda is Zaveda. What can be done? She had a Jewish accent. Yeah. Zaveda is Zaveda. What uh, can be done? A little Amy Dickinson here. Uh, yeah. I frequently read in your column about people snooping into their partner's email or text. Oh, God. And that, how that, that is a breach of privacy. That's not good. Marriage does not, sh does not, or should really not, give one the right to spy and hack. I disagree. No part of either my phone or computer is private from my husband. Oh, I mean, this is the woman speaking. Yes, of course. Okay. He is too lazy to log out of my Facebook account and into his, so he just reads mine. He never comments for me, though. He, he, yeah, he just happens to not log out. If I wanted to hide any portion of my personal life from him, I think it would mean that I was doing or thinking something that I shouldn't. Or uh, if somebody has a vivid uh, and jealous imagination, vivid imagination, and is the jealous type. If we live authentic, suspiciously, yeah. honest lives, there's nothing to hide. Our privacy should be shared privacy. That's because she wants to know what he's doing at all times. 
please explain what is wrong with my thinking. Yeah. I got her number. Amy's answer. There's nothing at all wrong with your thinking. Some, some couples don't close the bathroom door when they use the toilet. That's different. That's different. So it's a normal bodily function uh, amongst your significant other. But we're talking about the right to, to some privacy. I mean, what is considered private is different for different people. That's true. If you don't consider anything on your phone, mail, or social media to be private, then your husband isn't violating your privacy by looking at it. Uh, well, if it's open and happens to be there, I guess he's not. But then why doesn't your husband comment? As you, when he is on your Facebook page. Evidently, you two are not completely interchangeable. However, having private conversations or correspondence doesn't mean a person has anything nefarious to hide. Having private thoughts, utterances, or writing simply means a person gets to have an interior life that isn't shared. Yeah, well, you can't be up each other's ass. I mean, you have you, you can't be smothering one another just because you're in love. Transparency is important in intimate relationships. I interpret this as I will tell you about relationships, financial dealings, family or work-related issues that impact you or our relationship. I will answer any questions about these issues honestly. This level of personal privacy requires trust on both sides. When trust has been broken, marriage counselors often prescribe an opening of all privacy doors. Uh. With unfettered access to all communication. But if trust is already established, or once trust is restored, most must those doors remain open? I'd love to run responses and thoughts about this issue from other readers. I think the answer is what she said before. It varies. It, it varies, but it, it's also insecurity that uh, a spouse or a significant other has to know, like, everything about the other person 24-7. You know, it's like, I mean, what's next? Following them around? Going into their wallet? Hey. Hack hacking into Spy their... Spy camera. Yeah, right, that. Hacking into their... Uh, and a GPS attached to their car. Their email. I mean, it, it can go on and on and on, you know? You know, a low jack attached to the car. Yeah, I mean, a uh, 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 cell phone that has a, a function of, of allowing you to be tracked using GPS. But is, what, is she a wife or is she a dispatcher? She, uh, she's a, 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 a delivery truck dispatcher. Wife. Wife. The picture of Governor Christie pointing his finger and berating the elementary school teacher and once again showing his anger at someone who disagrees with him is appalling. Hey, when, Christi, when Chris Christie first became a lawyer, I'm sure he wanted to make top dollar. Well, a, a school teacher, a teacher, is also entitled to a professional pay, to a profession pay, uh, status, I mean, a profession uh, uh, type of salary. They should be well compensated for what they do that they had to go to school for, you know? There are complaints now from the conservatives that we've spent, even George W. Bush, we've spent so much money on education. All what about the years. military? Well, if they did spend all that money, it ain't getting to the kids. 
you know, the why is education in the United States so severely lacking? Yeah, the quality. They didn't get into the kids, you know? No, well, they they uh, they were interviewing. I uh, was watching a video where they were interviewing um, college students. Uh, yeah, they couldn't even name a one senator. Political. There were there were political majors in college, yeah. and they could not name one current senator, United States senator. Yeah. One at the end said Rand Paul. Yeah, and somebody said Barney Frank, but he's yeah, he was a congressman. He was a congressman. Was was. But these are these are college students. They should know better. Studying politics. What are they doing in class? Sleeping? Possibly. Thinking about when when and where the next party is going to occur? You know we don't like politics. We want a party. Yeah, it's Tony Testosterone. Brian okay. Slate. Yeah. We want a party. You know we want a party. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you didn't bother to vote, people. November the 4th. There you go. And that's why a vote not cast is a vote for a Republican. Because those nuts make it their business to vote. Get to those freaking polls. The fanatics go. They get On there. time, baby. But all, all the um, the nice people decided to be too lazy to vote. And there's your results. While we have all come to expect that our governor... That, excuse me. We all have come to expect that of our governor... What is equally disturbing is the expression on his wife's face. She seems to enjoy her husband's bullying and is actually smiling at this poor woman being humiliated. She's getting a kick out of it. Further, that is not the only time she has exhibited this reaction. She did the same thing when Christie recently told a protester, Shut up and sit down! And if you'd like to see the picture, here it is. Right there. In red and white. Hold on. And blue. Let me take a look at this. Oh, what a, what a perfect picture. Yep. With the finger up and everything. Yep. I wonder if this is, uh, if I Google this. Probably too small. I wonder if I can find this on the internet. Okay, I, 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 that's about the best you're going to get, I think. Yeah, I mean, you got you got Chris Christie with his mouth Come in open. just a bit, just a bit. All right. Come in uh, just a bit. Brow beating. Okay, right around there. Scolding the school teacher with his finger in her face, practically. Yeah. You know, wagging his finger. So he should be wagging his tail behind him. So obnoxiously, you know. Uh, well, why on earth would anyone want to go to school to be a teacher if they're not going to be paid as a professional? I'm sure, like Chris Christie, politicians are, most of them are lawyers. I'm sure... They want to make top dollar. Otherwise, they wouldn't be lawyers. Well, why do we why do we uh, allow Wall Street to have all these big paychecks and bonuses go. and all this shit? But it's, it's just one of the examples of capitalism again being unfair. But but he doesn't want school teachers to make a a fair wage. Well, that's because conservatives don't like school teachers in the first place, because they are usually liberal in their view. That's right. Academia is generally liberal and uh, I don't think they really want the mainstream to get a good education. That's correct. Because they want to set up mainstream as slaves. The earth is only 6,000 years old. Desperate slaves. Desperate okay. people that will work for any damn thing. That's correct. That's the... That's the uh, the capitalist wet dream. Well, okay. all these Republicans in the spotlight that are against the minimum wage, uh, would they let their children work at a minimum wage job? Um, 
Mr. Jono yesterday put up that thing about Washington, the state of Washington, fifteen dollar minimum wage. Oh, something, and the, 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 something went wrong. The, the business, they're going out of business. The co oh, really? Companies are going out, and I said bullshit. Of course, it's bullshit. Companies are going out of business since since they raised the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour. Bullshit. They're probably thriving in Seattle. We're talking about Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. And I think Chicago recently raised it to like 13 an hour or something like that. Why couldn't they just round it off to 15? What's wrong with you people in Chicago? Why don't they just round it off to 25? Well, I think it like is it in, um, um, oh, let me think. I believe it is in the 20s, the minimum wage in a, um, yeah. in one city. Oh, gosh. Let me. City or country? No, 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 no. no. We're talking about a U.S. city. Oh, okay. It'll come to me, but it's it's up there. Uh -huh. Oh, man, I can't think of it. Anyway. Well, in the meantime. Anyway, it'll, it'll come to me. When Steve Allen was the host of The Tonight Show... He started as a pro wrestling uh, commentator, you know. That's correct. Steve Allen. One of his going ongoing skits was reading newspaper letters to the editor and giving them the emotion, exaggerated of course, that he thought the writer must have felt. I love that. Those that that those skits. Just about every day in the record there is an anti Obama screed. And once in a while I do a Steve Allen with one. But it also makes me sad that we seem to live in a world in which critical thinking, curiosity, introspection, and the like are anathema to most people. It's blatantly obvious that it is a gut hatred of this present that drives the writers to grab anything they can find to support their vitriol. I'm not writing this to praise President Obama. He has done some good things and some not so good things. Was there ever a president who was different in this regard? San Francisco, over twenty dollars an hour. I just remember uh, there you go. 22 or 23, something like that, an hour, the minimum wage of San Francisco, California. I salute the city I, of San Francisco. A, 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 they've always been a very progressive part of the United and States. And gay community. Yes, progressive though. <laughs> they, they, but they're up on all the you know nutrition and holistic living, holistic oh health and everything. But, but I believe that the rain has has devastated them over there. Oh, first they got a, first they drought. had a terrible drought. Now they have too much water. That's exactly it. I don't, I don't know what the should you, should you complain about that? I mean, I guess too much of a good thing and is a, not good. Well, in California now with all the, the 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 burning down of all the trees and everything, and the water has nowhere to go. What about the mudslides? Or get sucked up. The mudslides, but yeah. then again, that's from that. Why, hey, man, you, you building homes up on these mountains, you must know that the mudslides occur. You must know that what goes up must come down. Now, this is the real estate industry just building homes for the sake of making a sale, building them anywhere in flood zones on the side of mountains. Was that much like what happened in 2000, 2008 with the financial crisis where? Uh, banks and mortgage companies, they were just loaning mortgages to anybody who wanted one. Anybody who wanted a mortgage. People that had no rights to get a mortgage. A ninja loan. Just No boom. income, no nothing. Yeah. It's like a, a car dealer commercial. And you know who the concern No is? money down. Don't worry about your credit. You can still finance a car. You know what? The who the conservatives blame for that government, because of the uh, I think it's the RCA or so whatever it is. It's, it was a law passed uh, years ago in '90s or whatever that they wanted the banks to stop redlining. 
they would they would not sell mortgages, give mortgages in certain areas of cities because they were black. So the laws wanted them to stop that. But the conservatives say, well that meant that they wanted the banks to get by loans to anybody. Uh, what kind of a bank would do that? Oh, I'm going to give you this mortgage here, but I don't care if you pay me back. What the hell? Come on, baby. Get a brain. If I only had a brain. His suit is Ray Bolger. His huh? suit is up for auction. The which one? The lion. Tin Man or the lion. Oh, the lion. lion. Bert Lar. Bert Lar. That's, that's going to get a, get a pretty penny. Uh, and by the way, Burt Reynolds... He's bankrupt. God rest his soul. I mean, no, he's not he's dead. He's not dead! I mean, I mean, I mean, the poor guy has to auction off everything. They say his toupees also. Toupees too. Everything, the poor guy is broke. I wonder I'm why. I'm sure Lonnie Anderson bled him dry during the divorce. I wonder, I wonder why, you know? The poor guy. Did he have bad Come on, man. Hold on. Everybody, everybody, please help out Bert, man. Don't let Bert live in squalor. I, I would not, I would be very upset. But, I don't remember any president for whom there has been such deep disgust. As younger folks might say, What's up with that? Ronald Reagan is a national treasure. He raised taxes many times. Signed an immigration reform executive order. Ran up the highest national debt in his lifetime. Engaged in a highly questionable war on a small Caribbean island. That was Grenada and was our commander-in-chief when we distributed weapons illegally! A treasonous felony! For which he seemed somehow to escape culpability. And like Barack Obama, he did some very good things. But he seems remembered only for those while our current president is vilified for many of the same things. What's up with that? Oh boy. Let's see what I meant to read from here. Okay. Boom. Now, maybe this. I don't know what planet the writer lives on, but it isn't this one. <coughs> he fails to understand that we live in a time of great economic angst. To say the least. In part because of President Obama's trickle-down economic policies. Did you know that he was practicing those policies? Trickle-down? Yeah, trickle-down. Nobody's trickling down. Nobody. Nobody on the two-party system ha is really effectively trickling down. That program has nothing to do with tax policy, but rather with monetary policy. The Federal Reserve policy of just about zero interest rates, in effect, gives money to the rich. So how does that trickle down? Siphoning up. Yeah. Henceforth, the stock market goes up and up. But ordinary people cannot save money because the interest rates are so low. So wages go down. And down, henceforth, we see a dramatic transfer of wealth as the rich get richer 
the poor get poorer and the middle class disappear. So what the hell does that have to do with trickle down? Yeah, I don't, no, it has nothing to do with trickle down. Exactly! In the early 1960s, Roman Catholics were too busy working and raising families to notice that Pope John the 23rd was about to change the church forever. He called for Vatican II, and the end result was a loss of tradition and discipline. Suddenly, obligations once faithfully lived by Catholics were put into question. In fact, it seemed that Catholics could do their own thing. Oh, gee. The result has been chaos. Priests, nuns, and laity floundered in uncertainty. What did God expect of them? How were they to conduct themselves in the modern world? Well, God doesn't want them to even be part of the world. No. Read John. Now, Catholics have a Pope who promises to make additional changes. People unhappy with Pope John Paul eagerly await Pope Francis's coming synod. It certainly will deal with poverty. But abortion? Euthanasia? Gay life? Gay marriage? Divorce and annulment are looming concerns as well. With respect to these, the secular world has shown us its direction. Will the Synod be in tandem or stand firm with Catholic teaching? It should be teaching of what the Bible really says, not about no not about man-made laws from organized religion. Well, uh, you know, there are these people who uh, say that Jesus did away with the law. Uh, yeah, there was a recent video from, um, oh man, who's that the guy that we like? Um, Beck? No, no, no. Uh, um, the, the, Refor the Reformation, the Reformation, the, the vi Oh, David Pack! David C. David Pack. David C. Pack. David C. Pack talking about, um, Christians that totally discount the Ten Commandments. Yeah, well, not they feel, all. They yeah. feel like they don't count anymore. The law doesn't count anymore. And I, 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 I didn't get a chance to watch it. I want to watch it. You did? Well, yeah. Well, it was well, good, right? Yeah. One, well, the problem is that what they have done is they, uh, they believe that they are saved no matter what. Because of the blood of Jesus. Covered by the blood. They're, they're, we're, in, we're in the grace period grace, now. We're under yes, grace yes. because uh, Paul's, Paul, Paul's letters, Paul said so. Or we're not under the law anymore. Well, he we're never under said grace. That. Huh? He never said that. But, but he said, should we do it with the law? God forbid! That's what he said. But the point is, what they did, and what like the Catholic Church did with uh, Constantine, Emperor Constantine, etc., was they 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 did away with those Jewish laws. You know, when when God gave them the Ten Commandments, He also gave them civil laws, cleanliness laws, things of that nature. Well, cleanliness like Leviticus. But those laws have not the uh, strength behind them that the Ten Commandments have. 
Oh no, if Ten Commandments are like like number one as far as because uh, like even uh, later on, uh, Jesus changed the the eating laws. Yeah. Basically, you could eat what the hell you wanted. Yeah, like the laws about stoning people to death for every little thing. Or if you work during the sa on the Sabbath, yeah, it's a capital punishment. Or right. Jesus, Jesus said. You heard, you heard in the past that uh, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Uh, well, Jesus says, now thou shalt not kill. Period. Okay? So certain, not for anything. Cert stone. Certain laws from the Old Testament became passe after Jesus. Civil laws. Civil laws, yeah. Not the Ten Commandments. Right. But they, they, hey, if you, threw, if you threw the Ten Commandments away, then we would have chaos. Well, you wouldn't have it. The problem is... We already have chaos, but... Yeah, you I mean, wouldn't have anything to obey. So. There'll be nothing to obey. That's right. People will be uh, going going wacky and saying, Oops, I'm forgiven. Yeah. Oh, oops, I, I ran... Nothing I nothing to judge me on. I, I ran you over. I, 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 uh, I did not obey the speed limit. I went through the stop sign, and I ran over your kid. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops, I'm forgiven. I'm covered by the blood. I'm forgiven. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? That's how people would be. Yeah. Yeah. You got nothing to do. Nothing to obey. I ran a stop sign and I plowed into your whole family. Oops. I'm forgiven. I'm covered by the blood. And I was three shades to the wind when I did it all. You know, make it real. Uh, you know, hey, without any, any law to follow or adhere to, well, that was an old uh, like thing with uh, hypocrisy. Would be. I think it was Paul Please. said that uh, uh, in 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 his time, uh, all there was a time when all men did whatever they wanted to. Well, that's how it's apparently yeah. these born again evangelicals today want want that back. They want to do anything they want, and 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 be forgiven and and say, all right, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 oop, I'm sorry I did this. Oop, um, I robbed the bank. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm human. I'm, you know, sinful yeah, by nature. They don't, they don't get it. That That's only a game, isn't it? Like one of your friends up there on Facebook one day, he's saying something about something similar to that stuff, but if you, you have to prove who your God is. If you got no proof of it, it's as good as worshiping Zeus. Well, it's all by faith. It's all. It ain't by faith. It says prove all things. Yeah, but nobody has been able to prove that their God exists yet. Well, then you can't have a religion with a deity, can you? No, a, a faith-based just means it's like hope. We're wishing. Faith hope, means based the on hope. hope of something that does not exist now. Right. You know. Yeah. Right. But that isn't what religion is supposed to be based on. God gives you a lot of stuff yeah. to prove that He exists. But it, one is the creation itself. But it's no reason you know? to be violent against your fellow man because you think your religion is the is the correct one. Well, that's the whole point, isn't it? If every if ninety nine let's let's assume for a moment. That one religion is true. So then, we have 99% of all religions that aren't true. So about trying to prove them, should we not? Because, it, because they waste people's time, they waste people's energy, they waste people's uh, resources, etc. In worshipping deities that do not exist. Look at the past. Even well, the, the recent past in Greeks and Romans. We worship Zeus. We worship Mercury. We were Well, H Hindus have... 30 million! That many? Gods. Yeah. No, 30 million. 30 million! How can that be? You, it can't be. It's an imaginary thing. Gods, demigod goddesses, demigods. Yeah. Uh, there's you know, a god, god for everything. The gods had offspring, and they, they, their kids became gods, and you know, baby gods, and uh, I don't know about 30 million, I but mean, there's a lot of them. You know, it's also like, 
It's also like, for instance, Satanists. If there's a real God, he's the God of the Bible, why would you be a Satanist? Satan is not as powerful as God. Well, not only you that, know? just look at what he represents and what what he has in store for you. And, uh, you know, so worshiping him will, will provide no benefit to you. And he is the lesser of the right powers yes you know and, so why and, would you do that and and if he's destined to get thrown somewhere to be put away to be put away for all eternity and where we meanwhile you are destined for the lake of fire <gasps> you know it's like it doesn't make sense to follow somebody who which means total destruction for you and your and your soul body and mind body and spirit it, well, it's against your best interests like a uh, like a person in the United States who doesn't have a pot to piss in who continues to vote Republican they do not have your best interests so why are you still voting for them and, and re-electing them? again we get back to the situation that if you were going to devote yourself to a, a religion or something of right. that nature, you better find out if it's true. Okay. Well, and and if you and if you want to spend taxpayers' money on your religion, you better prove it. Well, that is a problem of the stupid people <laughs> who are in government who give them a tax break. Yeah, you hear what they you don't mean. deserve a tax break. Yeah, they hear what Jesse Ventura said. Uh, that every time the Republicans are in control, science is put way on the back burner. Science comes to a complete halt. Well, you see the guys in there now, the guy that is the, becoming the chairman of the science committee, et cetera. We don't want the EPA to have scientists informing it anymore. We want people from industry to do that. And people from industry are going to do its best for profit for business, <laughs> not for the planet. Well, Holy crap. And these are the, look, look, whether you didn't vote, whether you're a nice guy or a nice girl, and whether you're progressive liberal and didn't vote, or whether you're a piece of shit right wing teabagger that did vote, either way, both of you have allowed the forces of evil to gain control of Washington. Correct. As pe people continuously <laughs> say on Facebook, they say, the government is this, the government is that. No, it's not the government. It's the people you elected that run the government. You have allowed it to happen. You Correct. Have, you have elected or allowed to be elected the wrong people that do not have your best interests. Uh, and all I can say is, heaven help the planet Earth now. Yeah, heaven, heaven help those, as I, I keep saying to some people sometimes, you'll always hear of these um, accidents uh, where an innocent person is harmed in some way or shape or form. Mm -hmm. And it often seems that way. The innocent always pay in some way, shape, or form. They didn't do anything to cause that. They're hey. innocents. Um, my co-host Mario Petrus, um, he took me to um, a takeout, a little takeout restaurant on, um, on uh, Broad Street in uh, Palisades Park, New Jersey. It was uh, a, play, a Greek uh, takeout restaurant that specialized in Greek food and, and it happens to be a hot spot for gyros. Uh, people from the whole region where I live go there. It, they make delicious gyros. And it was outrageously tasty. It was very good. And um, he went in there. He hasn't been there in a while. and. Uh, the woman that he befriended that owns the place he said she's a very nice lady 
she just recently uh, uh, got hit by a New Jersey Transit bus and, and it dragged her oh, for God knows how many feet on the street, just just plowed into her and, and dragged her and she got killed. She died. Uh, uh, it was a quick, unexpected demise of a very nice lady, he was telling me. She was very nice. She was the owner and, you know. This happens much too often. Her, everything she worked for, uh, whatever money, you know, her income, her savings. Gone up in smoke. Boom, gone, boom. And my message to all you greedy, stingy conservatives that are filthy rich. Hey man, what if you were taken out quickly what do you think? You're gonna you're gonna be like King Tutankhamun, and you're gonna take all your riches with you mm. to the grave, to the afterlife? Yeah, I think a lot of them do. They think they they yeah. are, like Dick Cheney and and the uh, all the old rich old geezers that uh, are making money. Let's see uh, if I can make the Cheney. Yeah, the the, the, right. the face. Yeah. Nah, I don't have a mean enough. Yeah, he looks like he's extremely, wait a minute, wait a minute. he looks like he's extremely constipated <laughs> and always disgruntled <laughs> all the time. You know, pushing it, man. Pushing and, it. And, and all the other rich old geezers that are making money off of uh, young people dying in unnecessary wars and uh, and fracking. You know, who the hell said frack? Fr fracking, um, oh, T. Boone Pickens. Mr. Green Energy, he has so much money invested in green energy, says that fracking does no harm. First he was anti-frack, anti-fracking. Now he says, oh, fracking doesn't do any harm. And 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 uh, and the oil, they're they're now they're now uh, the oil supply of crude oil is like unlimited it's just flowing out like non-stop and, and you know and and, and now that it might put fracking to a complete halt cancel out fracking but t boom Pickens says fracking is okay well, what about all those waters that have been polluted how could you it? be green energy and and be pro fracking because he never was that whole thing with the with the windmills over there in the Midwest. Or yeah, whatever, he's full of shit. Bunch of bullshit. I hear he wanted to do the same thing that the uh, CEO of Nestle, yeah. uh, Brabeck, wants yeah. to do is to buy the it. to bra to buy all of the aquifers to control nah, the world's drinking water supply. There you go. Because they want to play God. They want to That's control right. humankind. They want to control the resources, baby. Control the food, like Monsanto. Monsanto wants to control the world's food supply. There you go. They don't care about feeding the hungry. Come on, they want to control. Uh, control. It's about. It sounds like it's about power. That's what it's about. Because they obviously have more than enough money to to live a great life, mm. and many times over, they obviously have that. Mm. If they're billionaires, uh, you know. And, and just like Jesse Ventura says, you have a maximum salary cap on professional athletes. Why not CEOs of companies? There used to be have a cap. It's, the reason it doesn't exist today is because we have made laws, as I say in my new article, under Clinton we had doing away with Glass-Steagall and welfare as we know and all these other laws and etc cetera, etc cetera. well what happened was with wall street in the 2007 8 and every 9 and etc is that we have made the illegal legal and that's what happened deregulating correct the fat cats correct so anything they do that was illegal at one time it's now legal. Okay? All right, continue. Amy Dickinson, last one here. Maybe we can leave on a lighter note. I've recently had multiple dreams where I cheat on my girlfriend. I've never been unfaithful to her or 
any previous girlfriend, and I never really even considered it. However, in the dreams, I am totally aware that I am in a relationship, but I still look up, excuse me, hook up, with these girls, usually an ex or a female friend of mine. In my dreams, I feel guilty, but I don't stop. Maybe an evil spirit is trying to break him his relationship up. I'm worried that this dream behavior could transfer over to the real world. Is this likely to happen? What should I do about it? If it festers and becomes a fantasy when he's awake, yeah, it can cause trouble, sure. Amy's answer. To illustrate my take on this, let me borrow a favorite line from the movie Working Girl. Sometimes I sing and dance around the house in my underwear. Doesn't make me Madonna. Never will. You are not your dream. Your dreams do not transfer over into the real world or dictate your behavior in your working life, excuse me, waking life. If they did, then I would regularly fly over the city wearing a Chicago Cubs uniform. Your dreams are an expression of your subconscious. Sigmund Freud thought that dreams were an expression of wish fulfillment. Can you enjoy these fantasies knowing that they are only fantasies? These dreams could mean you are feeling serious about this relationship and you are anxious about the commitment. <clears throat> Their real meaning is revealed in how you use them to understand yourself better. This presents an opportunity to explore your own wishes and fears and fantasies and anxieties. You could do this in a more cogent way with the help of a psychologist. But I think you should relax. One of my favorite books on dreams is The Complete Dream Book. Discover what your dreams reveal about you and your life by Gillian Holloway, 2006. Oh well. You know, dreams uh, could represent fantasies. Dreams could represent many things. They could be omens. They could be uh, 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 the expression of uh, the inner you, you know, things that you have suppressed and pushed into the subconscious uh, on, on deliberately. And they, they, they manifest themselves in the, in, in the sleep state, in the deep sleep. They come out and reveal themselves. Uh, they could also feel very good. They can like feel real. They can feel when you have entered the woman's body. Oh, you mean like a virtual reality chamber, like the holodeck on Star Trek? They 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 have the real feel. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Maybe. You know. It's a dream. You don't you don't plan on dreaming what you dream. Uh, it just happens, and uh, you know, like 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 there have been uh, people like Edgar Casey, who whom they call the sleeping prophet. Sleeping prophet. And um, what can I say? Dream when you're feeling blue, like the song. For dream. That's the thing to do. Things are not as bad as they seem. Dream, dream, dream. Okay. There you go. That's it. That's we'll, it. We'll it's a you, wrap. We'll see you next time. It's a wrap. I don't mean uh, a f with a flour tortilla either. Yeah, no, no tortillas. Yeah. I like the corn tortillas, but who knows? It might be, G GMO. It might be GMO corn. That's not good. No. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good one. So long, people. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.